this isn't in like a messing with way, but who was the um, who was just like an absolute crowbar in the ring with everything they did and just everything hurt. Oh, crowbars. Yeah, well, just, yeah, just the absolute stiffest. Oh God, I, I, I've worked with a thousand of them, especially uh, uh, some of the guys that were just working into the business. You know, where they're they're coming in and wasn't trained properly. There's a lot of them, but. One of the stiffest guys I ever been in the ring with was probably probably Gene Anders. Really? I mean, he could work, but he always let you know that he could stick your head up your ass anytime mm -hmm. you wanted to. And and he did. He grabbed me one time right here, my arm, and and he just he grabbed me. But I love Gene. Gene was my friend. But he grabbed me in my arm in the ring one time. He squirt, and it it it, it, it shot me to understand a grip like that because I just dropped right to my knees. Boom. And he told me, he said, slow down. Hmm. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> I, I was in slow motion <laughs> for the rest of the night. But, you know, it was, you know, you had a, a lot of your old shooters were like that. Uh, uh, Luthez, you know, I had the opportunity to work with both of these guys uh, back then. You know, they were older. Uh, like me now, but I had the opportunity to get in the ring with them. And, you know, especially all your old shooters, they still wanted to let you know that they were a shooter and mm. do all kinds of stuff. You know, Stu Hart, every time I seen him, he, he'd want to put a wrestling hold on me. Come here, you little bastard. <laughs> Look here, man. He'd put a hold on you. He's gone, man. Look here, I'll give you $50. Like, you. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> How, how long did it take you to wise up and whenever you started feeling your arms just to well you know away? what no no it, it, same thing with Gene uh, with Stu uh, you know although Pat O'Connor uh, all those guys you know I'd come in and I'd just uh, you know I'd be I stand for a hop you know hi Pat how you doing hmm. and I would go shake hands with him Danny <laughs> Hodge you never want me to shake hands with him but Jesus Christ man he just I was in a, I was in a bar in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Danny had a little beer joint, <laughs> so I went over there to it. And here I, I walk in there, and it's a redneck place you ever seen in your life. But I'm sitting there at the bar. Me and Danny are talking. I'm having a beer, and this guy walks up. Hey. These people back here say you want them fake wrestlers that's on TV. And and I just turned around and looked at him. And Danny Hodge stood up. And you got to uh, understand, to, to see Danny Hodge, that's why you never judge a book by its cover. Because he looked like anything else other than a professional wrestler or a killer. That's what I'm trying to tell you, son. I mean, these... Look here, he stood up and said, oh, hi, my boy. He goes, uh, what's your name? And he shook the guy's hand. The guy fell straight to his knees. He turned around, put the sleeper on him. Listen to me. In a matter of 30 seconds, he shook his hand, put the sleeper on the guy's shit, and pissed on himself, and he's <laughs> laying in the floor. Okay. <laughs> this is a matter of 30 seconds. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. And then he walked over and told me, he says, come and get your fake cowboy out of my bar. They drug him outside, man. <laughs> he hey, to see stuff like that. I seen Harley race do that one time too. Harley, you know, he uh he had that that grip on him and he was uh him and Flair at the bar, you know, and back then you could smoke in the bars, you know, and Harley smoked cigarettes. Him and Flair were talking and uh this is the it's, it's a place that I don't know if it's there out probably anymore. It's called the Hall of Fame Bar in Tampa, Florida. And that's where the boys would go after the matches. And I'm sitting there and Harley is smoking a cigarette and a guy walks up to him. He was a defensive end for the, for the pro football team there, Tampa. And he asked, uh, he told uh Harley said, I want to be a professional wrestler. He said, what's it take for me to be a professional wrestler? And Harley turns around with a cigarette in his mouth and he went to shake his hand. Bam! The guy went straight to his knees, too. He's playing, please let me, oh, please, you're going to break my hand. 
and Harley goes, I don't think you could make be a professional wrestler. He <laughs> just turned around, nor the guy. I said, I didn't mess with it. So uh, seen a couple of things like that. Uh, Don Morocco told me one really uh, similar with Harley Race. He was at a bar and, and uh, some, he went to the toilet and some guy followed him in and went, hey, you're that Ric Flair, that fake wrestler, and, you know, calling him all these names. And he thought he was Ric Flair. So Harley Race, while he was still pissing, turned around, knocked him out, carried on pissing, walked over his body. And then he found out afterwards that Ric Flair was handed a lawsuit because the uh, guy he punched had uh, mistaken identity. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> So they got Ric Flair for it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll, uh, I'll give you a couple more. Um, the uh, best jobber you ever wrestled? George South. Oh, well, there you go. That's an easy one. Yeah, <laughs> George South. <He's>, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what? And he's still on the wrestling circuit, too. And, you know, it, 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 it being 65 years old, still a lot I can do in the ring but I don't trust the guys these days. Uh, it, you know, it's like I was telling you earlier when you was talking about, and I never had trouble because I worked on top a lot and you can't hurt your main talent. Uh, the guy, you know, they just don't give a shit about you in the ring. Nowadays, you, you see how stiff they work in the ring and, and, and they don't have to. To be in a great professional wrestler is to make it look real. But the one thing about making it look real is you've got to sell it like it's real. You see, in George, when you work with him, I, when I work with him, you know, I can work with him sometimes and go 15 minutes without even locking up. Because we, you, when you got the people screaming so loud, and I tell these young guys that, I said, you got the people screaming so loud, why do you lock up? I said, because they're going to go right back down. They're just going to go down when you lock up. But if you know, if you have a guy that knows how to work like that, I'd go an hour with him. You, you understand what I'm saying? Because I can trust him. He's not going to hurt me. And he's going to let me sail. And, and even in, in our day, to me, he was the best job boy that was ever in because, you know, he knew his job. Uh, he, he, you know, he, he wasn't out there to in, impress anybody. He was just there to do his job. And I and it's the greatest thing ever. The loudest eater? Uh, Andre the Giant. Oh. <laughs> yes. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I went and just the wildest eater. I mean, just if you ever went out to eat with him, you'd understand what I'm talking about. You know, he just don't order number seven. You know, he orders 12 but number seven and six and number eight, and, you know, and, and drink quarts of wine while he's eating and uh, I mean if you go eat with him you might as well you know get, be ready your ass is going to sit there for an hour hour and a half while he eats I'm serious uh, not a you know not a messy but just wild to watch him eat, how much he could put in his body you know I watched you know at night sometimes he'd drink a hundred beers sometimes out party you know just drinking and but to look at him you know a uh, a, a beer can was about like this in his hand. You hear me? A big, long neck. <laughs> it was. <laughs> but uh, Andre would be my choice. Not not to be nasty, but to eat, eat so much and order so much at one time, it'll blow your mind. 